What's up, everyone? It's Thursday, December 5th. Is that it? It is. It feels like Christmas already. Yeah. <laughs> we are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. I'm Paul Wontor. And I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Go ahead, show them the slide. Show them the show pen. Them your, show them your show new, them the pen. Uh, <laughs> who's that? It's Patrick Starr. Pa okay. Guess what's airing this weekend? Uh, what's it called? I don't SpongeBob. Know, I think it's just the SpongeBob Bob musical. musical. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I got to see part of it in a screening. It's fantastic. Of course. Ethan Slater gets to do crazy things with his eyes. <laughs> Ethan Slater's great in close up. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Hey. Yes. I love talking about the inheritance. I know you do. I do. My as favorite well. play. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Harris is here yes. today from the cast of the inheritance. We're gonna find out all about him. But first, today's top five. has announced its UK premiere. Um, yes, so it is a new musical take on some, a title that's been around for a while. We're talking about Monsoon Wedding. So this was a film in 2001, mm -hmm. um, and then I believe they started talking about turning it into a musical around like 2014, mm -hmm. like a yeah. long time ago. Um, however, now there there's a new take on this. Um, it is based, of course, on Mina Nair's film, um, and is going to play two UK premieres is going to do do two different places. So first, it'll be at the Leeds Playhouse, and it'll begin on June twenty second, and will go through July eleventh of twenty twenty, and then it will move to London's Roundhouse from July seventeenth through August twenty ninth. This is uh, the same production that ran at the Berkeley uh, Repertory Theater in twenty seventeen. Uh, right. So it is that, that version mm -hmm. of the musical. Um, it is directed by Stephen Whitson as well as the film director Nair uh, there at the helm of this, and it features a book by Arpita Mukherjee. Um, and screenwriter Sabrina Dewan, she co-wrote the film as well. Um, it features music by Fashal Bardwaj, lyrics by Masi Ser, and Tony nominee Susan Birkenhead contributed lyrics to it as well. Um, it is set in Delhi, um, and it follows preparations are underway for a, an arranged wedding, but the bride is having an affair, the father <gasps> is in financial trouble, and dark family secrets surface as relatives arrive for this arranged wedding. Casting for the production will be announced at a later date, but I'm happy to see that uh, Monsoon Wedding is going to get some more musical treatment here. I love that movie. I'd cool. love to see it yeah. on Broadway. Awesome. So, yeah. And this new play with music has announced its casting. So this is a Cambodian rock band is the name. It's directed by uh, Cha Yu. And we just found out Courtney Reed. Love Courtney Reed. We love him a lot. Francis Ju, who was just fantastic in Soft Power. Mm -hmm. Joe Nago, Abraham Kim, Moses Villarama, and newcomer Jane Liu are all in this new mm. play with music. You said to play with music? A play, play with, with music. music. Sure, we like that. Yeah. Like music. <laughs> uh, it's at the signature, and it tells the story of a Khmer Rouge survivor returning back to Cambodia for the first time in 30 years as his daughter prepares to help prosecute one of the most infamous war criminals. Ooh. So we're all going to learn Juicy. a lot about Cambodia. Cambodia, yeah. Uh, off Broadway. Mm -hmm. And it starts February 4th, 2020. February 24th at the Signature Center on 42nd Exciting. Street. And save the date for this season's Drama Desk Awards. The Drama Desk Awards, of course. Are we supposed to write it in our calendar? What? Yeah. 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 Okay. I haven't even ordered my 2020 calendar yet. So these will take place. Uh, the actual ceremony will take place on May 31st of 2020. Oof. It will happen at New York City's Town Hall. Um, wow, that is a ways away. Nominations for the Drama Desk Awards. They will be announced on April 21st. Uh, the Drama Desk Awards, of course, honor any uh, performances and productions on Broadway off-Broadway and off-off-Broadway as well. Last year, top winners of the Drama Desk Awards included The Prom, oh. The Ferryman, the Yiddish language <laughs> production of Fiddler on the Roof, and the Waverly Gallery. Remember The Prom? Yeah. Are you oh. trying to start awards fever? I can't. Let's uh, am I not? I'm just reading the news. <laughs> I'm stop? sorry. I can't do this yet. This I is won't crazy. put awards in yes. the news anymore. But, you know, yes, it's it, it's. The season is coming. Oh. Season. It's the season. Oy vey. War season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these two stage stars are going to be singing out some sweet tunes at Carnegie Hall. Yeah, so everyone likes to do this uh, in the winter. I feel like they like to the go to Carnegie, Carnegie Hall. Absolutely, yes. Put on a nice outfit. Sip a hot toddy and listen to. <laughs> do they serve <laughs> yes. hot toddy? Probably not. Right. No. Oh. Just, just, okay, sure. That's you a warming can sneak beverage. It in. Yeah. Uh, Laura Michelle Kelly, <laughs> new, mom. new mom. Yes. Laura Michelle Kelly. Who is a former, we like to talk about our bloggers, probably.com yes. blogger. 
joining another Broadway.com blogger, Max von Essen. <laughs> My gosh, we And pick they will be at Carnegie Hall on January 24th doing... Find Your Dream, the songs of Rodgers and Hammerstein. So this is right That's up beautiful. my alley. If it was yeah. Lerner and Lowe, I wouldn't be so excited. <laughs> Sorry. Al Lerner Sorry, and Lowe Sorry, I love r &H. <laughs> uh, Anyway, January 24th, 8 p.m., there will be numbers from all 11 Rodgers and Hammerstein classic wow. collaborations. And you know well, who amazing. they are. Judith Clorman will direct the concert, and Stephen Reinecke will be the musical director and conductor. So mm -hmm. that should be fun. Bring your hot Bring your hot in a thermos. In a thermos. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Yes, and we will use any excuse to celebrate the incredible Danielle Brooks. Managed to avoid that this is another story about awards, uh, which I am now <laughs> Stop going it, to Ryan. Stop. <laughs> Sorry. Try this to is, uh, these are great, though. These are the Actors' Equity Foundation Awards, and they have named three stage stars as the recipients of the special awards for their work on stage. They include Tony nominee Danielle Brooks. New mom, New mom as well, New mom. yes, uh, and John Keating. They will be receiving the 2019 Joe A. Calloway Award for their turns in Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, which was in the park, and that's mm. Danielle Brooks, and Irish Rep's O'Casey Cycle, uh, which featured, of course, Keating. Um, and finally, Tony nominee uh, Jonathan Hadari. Uh, he is the winner of the annual St. Clair Bayfield Award, Ooh. and that's for his performance in Shakespeare in the Park's Coriolanus. Uh, Did you know oh, that he was my first Herbie? Really? He was Tyne Daly's Herbie and Jefferson. Oh, of course. Oh, oh that's myself. super sweet. No, but yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> anyway, he's good. They will be presented with these awards during a ceremony that we can't attend at the Equities office on January 13th, 2020. I don't think it's open, it I don't think it's open to toddy? the public. No, <laughs> with some with a thermos okay. of hot toddy. You can show up. No. Um, there are a few other things that you should check out oh. on the site very yeah. soon. Um, another episode of Catherine Gallagher's vlog, Jagged Little Thrill, and is up on the site. Tonight. Yeah. Speaking happy of Jagged Little Thrill, Happy, happy at the Opening. Theater. Uh, you can finally see production photos from that production as well mm -hmm. on the site right now. Uh, you also got a first look at the Frozen tour. We have production photos of that. Caroline Bowman looks. <gasps> unbelievable as mm -hmm. Elsa. She's absolutely amazing. And photos of Dear Evan Hansen. They celebrated three years on the Great White Way. Ryan, that's not all. That's I, ju not I just hit publish. <gasps> oh, I was in oh, here. I missed On a it. feature. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Matt Murphy did a great uh, photo shoot with Sonia Taya, <gasps> Moulin Rouge choreographer, yes. and, the, and the ensemble of the show. And I inter sat down and interviewed her. And She's a whole, amazing. She is so incredible. And yeah. I loved talking to her mm -hmm. and hearing her story a She's little bit. She's just getting started, too. We're going to be seeing so Speaking of time. awards season, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. she'll be around for awards yes. season. And also, no, she, she's working on Sing so. Street right now at New York Theater Workshop. Oh, oh my god! So I finally out. watched she it. She has Moulin Rouge, Big Hit, and so Sing good. Street. And, oh, my gosh. And she's fantastic. So the photos are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And yes. the interview is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Just as fascinating Sorry. as this interview is going to be. <laughs> yes! yes! OK, yeah. enough. <laughs> Enough. You go worry about a word. I'm going to get season. out of here. Yes, I will. We go Caitlin, uh, tell everyone about today's guest. Yes, guys, we got Kyle Harris with us in the studio today. He can currently be seen in The Inheritance on the Broadway. He previously made his Broadway debut in Sondheim on Sondheim, and his other stage credits include West Side Story, and he was in the world premiere of Marie Dancing Still. Um, you may know him for some of his screen credits, which include things like Stitchers, God Friended Me, and Indoor, Boy Indoor Boys, and those creators, Wesley Taylor and Alex Wise, were just here on Live at Five a few weeks ago, so we love a full circle moment. Make sure you follow Kyle on social media at Kyle Harris. Leave all of your questions in the comments below, and everyone, please welcome Kyle and Paul. Thank you, Kayla. On the table. How are you, sir? I'm good. How you doing? I love your hair, son. I love your hair. <laughs> That's the kind of hair I always wanted to have, by the way. Really that, cute. That was always like. That was, how long does that take? Th oh, this is like 30 seconds. Okay. It's so easy. Yeah, same. It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. You know, you're kind of new to me, but I feel like I should have seen things that you've done, but I miss I miss them all. Yeah. But, but I'm yeah. sorry. No, it's but, fine. Um, but I'm catching up. <laughs> I'm fair. catching it's up. Fair, yeah. You're fantastic in The Inheritance. Oh, thank and you. And this is great ensemble. It is. Of how many people in the core... Well, oh God! I it's it's a group, a good group of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you are so good. And every I love this play because everyone gets their these great moments. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of great moments as Jasper. Yes. 
Um, let's talk about Jasper a little yeah. bit. Who, who is this this guy that you're bringing to the story of the inheritance? Uh, so Jasper is sort of like this. Uh, he he has a company that he deems as that he's a, a social justice entrepreneur. Yes. Which I don't actually know. We don't actually know if that exists. But he just is the kind of he's guy woke. that likes to. Yeah, he's woke. He's exactly. Woke. Or he thinks he is anyway. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and he uses that privilege to uh, to kind of get after Henry, who's played by. Um, John Benjamin Hickey, yes. and uh, we love him, but it's, yeah. it's kind of, I don't want to give anything away, but he basically just kind of is the one who will say what everyone else is thinking, yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, he kind of yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, just kind of brings the bomb to any party he goes to, because if it's not about him, he wants to make it about him. Uh-huh. Yeah, we, we all know people. Yeah. Like Jasper. Mm -hmm. I'm like, assuming yeah. you, it was easy for you to sort of uh, drop it. Yeah, it's the this. guy you're kind of like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he needs yeah. a bit of a leash. And, what, but you, and you do sort of face off with John Benjamin Hickey. Mm -hmm. um, is it, was it like going, having that with him? I He's mean, you know him. Guy. He's just like the biggest teddy bear of a man. And it's just like, so it's just, it's, it's hard to actually kind of do that. But at the same time, like he brings it, he's been doing it for so long and he, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you know, you kind of take the gloves off with him every night, which is, which is awesome. And right. you get to, you know, hug it out afterwards. But yeah, yeah, yeah. In the moment, <laughs> hug it out, heated. hug it yeah. out. There's a lot of hugging mm -hmm. after the inheritance. Yeah, it, it, lots of a lot Kleenex. of hugging necessary yeah. <laughs> because it, it is quite a beautiful play, has a lot to say, mm -hmm. audience, it makes audiences feel a lot, laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely sort of goes to the emotions. Definitely. Um, talk a little bit about the audition process with this because mm -hmm. I, I sort of know that everybody wanted to be in this play. It, yeah. It was definitely, and the, certain core cast members were coming over from the London production. Yes. But there were a lot of opportunities open. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you had heard of it and sort of it won funny, the Olivier. Yeah, and... funny enough, I hadn't. You hadn't? No, okay. I was, so I was on a plane, uh, the very first time I ever heard about it, I was on a plane to Seattle to do Marie at the Fifth Avenue. Yeah, and Marie, wait, wait, what's it called now? Marie, well, I don't know, there's so many titles. Hey, Marie Dancing, Dancing Still, Still. Marie Dancing Still. It was not, it was Little Dancer, not Tiny Dancer. It was Little, little Dancer. Dancer. And then, anyway, we're going to talk more about we'll that. We'll go there later. So that's another show yes. you've been a part of. And uh, so I'm sitting next to one of the cast members, and he's reading this play, and the cover kind of looks like a Gap ad. And I'm like, yes. what? Is that? And he's like, oh, I'm just reading this play. There's a part, and he'd be perfect for it. And I'm like, okay, well, when you're done, maybe I'll read it. Never gave it to me. But then <laughs> it came back on my radar around the time uh, that I was getting married, and I had to put myself on tape for this during my mini moon, which is the thing people do now. It's, Wait, what's a mini? It's moon? like a pre honeymoon situation. A so. Pre? Yeah. I don't know. You get about both this. now. I Wait, guess you get to, you go you go on a trip before the wedding. No, no, after, after the wedding for like a day, two day kind oh, of quickie. thing, and then yeah, and then you do the big one. Okay, okay, I get box. it. So it's better than a staycation, but it's not a honeymoon. Yeah, moon. yeah, it's more a or less. Mini moon. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so you're on your mini moon. Um, yeah, and uh, I you had to. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I got to put myself on tape for this play. Yeah. that's <laughs> whatever to the wind, and then they uh, they they're like, all right, well, we want to see him, and so fly back early for it, do the thing, get in the room, I meet the team, I uh, reading for Jasper, and um, afterwards, uh, Stephen Daldry's just like, come come outside with me, come have a cigarette, and I was like, okay, I don't smoke, but he's like, come get secondhand <laughs> smoke with me, let's go. So he drags me outside, and he's just like, you would actually do this play? And I was just like, well, I, well yes, absolutely I would do this thing. And this whole time, <laughs> I thought Stephen Daldry was the writer of the show. Oh. This man who's okay. talking to me. I was like, oh, he's the British guy. He must have, you know, wrote Clearly, it's that thing, yeah. And that, Matthew that Lopez is also in the London. room. And I was like, he's the American, he's probably the director, this guy. Yeah. And I was like, man, this writer really likes me, but I don't think he's going to have the pull. Of... <laughs> but I went home and I was like, man, I mean, the writer liked me. And I was like, let me just do a quick Google search. And I was like, oh my God, that was the director. And then you saw a picture of baby face, Matthew Lopez. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Who wrote this and beautiful, it, brilliant play. Yeah. And so then I went back the next day and I was just like, you know, did the same same stuff and it was just sort of they all shook my hand and gave me hugs and I was like well wow. either they're just the nicest group of guys I've ever met wow. or I got the job and then a day later got the call and mm -hmm. then they're like we need to close a contract because we have a Vogue photo shoot happening in two days and I was like this yes. is gonna be crazy right um so yeah it was That's kind of quick. a whirlwind thing you need yeah. a yes right now yeah they're like I'll do it yeah absolutely so, so this yeah. is um, a two-part play yeah it's a it's a big meaty play yes did it take a long time to rehearse and it get on its feet did I mean we were in previews for seven weeks right I think the rehearsal you process did part was... one first mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right and mm -hmm. then you started performing part two. part two yeah we were doing part one at night and then teching part two sort of the next day during the mm -hmm. day so it was, it was a lot um, but it you know you you've seen it it's worth it, it yeah. you know it, it demands a lot yeah um, so, but it was just immediately, like, we didn't do a table read. We just got there. Wow. You sit here, you sit here, you sit here. Mm -hmm. And then we watched 
the London guys come over and do their stuff, and we were all just like, oh my god, the bar they set uh -huh. was just yeah. so inspiring, yeah. and so just like lived in that we all did our best to get off book as fast as we could. Uh -huh. Um, to kind of get to their level as quick as we could. Yeah. And so it's just a huge testament to, to the bar they set for us and that we, you know, uh -huh. rose to the occasion with. So I think it's a great team. What do you like about The Inheritance? What, what sort of moves you about it? What, what, what do you think about this? I mean, do do I, I, I just love that it's, it, it starts a conversation. It's, it, it moves people. I mean, yeah. I've, just, I've been a part of so many things that are beautiful to look at and there are moments in it. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen a lot of that kind of theater. But this, I think, is really something that, it changes people, you know, mm -hmm. like we're changed. I know the audience is completely changed. We spend the whole seven hour, you know, two part thing with people and it's, they get to know who we are by the end of the day. And, mm -hmm. you know, and you're definitely changed when you leave that theater. And I think that's kind of the reason I got into this in the first place. So mm -hmm. it's nice to finally get to actually do that. Yeah. So, so who is your wife? Stephanie Brown. Okay. And you guys have been dating a long time, right? Yeah, 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a long time. So it took you a while to, to ask the question. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was very, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> very sudden. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to call you on or anything. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. You have a ring on. It's, all, mm -hmm. it's good to go. Um, I, I'm kind of curious about what, um, you know, obviously The Inheritance is about a bunch of gay men. Yes. So I'm curious what 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 is sort of like you as a heterosexual man. Yeah. What is, what is what what does it mean to you, and what's it been like, sort of discovering this this really interesting? I think it's sort of a very interesting educational story about these generations of gay men. And of course. What, what's it been like for you dropping into that and I mean, getting I, to know these stories? Well, I think it's like you know, like just it, it, we we deal with the AIDS epidemic, yeah. and I think that's something that you know. Uh, so many people my age, like we, we yeah. obviously knew about it, but didn't really get to like experience it firsthand. Yeah. But at the same time, getting to do this and like re living that moment and feeling the impact of the audience every night, it, yeah. it's, it definitely puts a weight on your shoulders to, to realize that you're like, that actually happened. Yeah. And to me, growing up, that was just something we read in history books, mm. you know? Um, so getting to sort of like bring those people back for that night for the yeah. audience members is really, really special. Yeah. And it's really heavy, but at the same time, you know that people are thanking you for it at yeah. the stage door. I mean, people and in the audience yeah, are they're, very mm. they're attached weeping to it. And, Yeah, and they tell you their stories, and it's just, it makes kind of the, the length of the show, the, 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 you know, the grueling process of it all mm -hmm. completely worth it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's just been so educational and just to kind of, you know, and, and just being able to represent like the community that I'm also a part of, but like the friends that I have and, you know, the family that I have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be trusted with this opportunity that Matthew Lopez gave me to, yeah. you know, to, use, you know, to, to tell his story in, in uh, with honesty, mm -hmm. you know, and just taking that in stride and, and doing my best to pay homage and give, you know, give yeah. that character the voice that it needs for, yeah. and to represent the people that are, you know, relating to it yeah. out, out in the audience. Your so. best is, is very good. Oh, um, thanks. It's working. Thank you. <laughs> so you actually, uh, let's talk about some of the other things you've done. You sure. you um, you were Tony in West Side Story, I right? I was way you, back. You did the tour. I did the first was national. That, was that fun? It was, it was. It was like a, it was a learning process. It was Arthur Lawrence's last production of West Side Story. So did you audition for him? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Back in the day. Because you auditioned it for the Broadway mm -hmm. production, right? Mm -hmm. And then they said, we want to put you on the tour. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And like he got up out of his chair and walked in the middle of the room and he shook my hand. He's like, you're very good. And oh. then he like took another five minutes to get back to his seat. And I was just like, all right, well, if anything, well, that happened. Good. Yeah. We have an Arthur Lawrence story. Yeah, exactly. Arthur Lawrence thought I was very good. I was, yeah, exactly. And then I went back to, you know, Stephen Sondheim's rehearsal for Sondheim on Sondheim that same day. So it was a very right, crazy right. sort of like, what are these old legends that's doing right. in my life right now? Yeah. Um, I never thought I'd be in that world, but I found myself very quickly in it. Uh huh. Um, Did you do musical theater growing up? No, I played soccer growing okay. up a thousand percent. And I was so. How did theater. this happen? You like? Let me guess. You had an injury, and you were like, "All oh, the cute girls are in drama club." Is it that story? I mean, I don't want to be that basic. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've just heard that story a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, more or less. Like, I needed the art credit. You know, I did the show choir in high school, and like okay. things. I was like, okay, my All sister right. danced, and I was able to, you know, kind of had a little bit of that. Uh, you know, growing up, but I didn't think that you could actually do this for a career. Like, I didn't right. realize that you would like major in musical theater. Right, right. Um, and then, then I went to, I followed a girl out there. Mm -hmm. um, didn't work out, and um, met my wife there. Um, oh, so, so that worked work out. out. Yeah, the, yeah, it worked out in another way. Yeah, out. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, we, you know, it was at University of Arizona. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, there's only a few of us out here, but there's, there's enough of us. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it's all we, so the rest is sort of history, cool. but yeah. 
What is your, and you were on Stitchers. I was on Stitchers, yeah. TV show, a lot of people know you from that. Yes. And and do do fans of Stitchers, like, do they come see The Inheritance? Is it, do they, does yeah. it follow you? Um, no, it's, there's a few. There's it definitely you, a like, few. like, on social media, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a few at the stage door that are just like, oh, I love you. And just like, you know, thank you for watching. Because, yeah. you know, when you're out there doing the thing, you don't know who's watching. Right. You just mm -hmm. hope people are watching so you can have another season, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you, you look more closely at the numbers when you do TV than you do Broadway because you're just like, right. that is very much a dictator of your job. Right, you're like, right. oh, this week no one watched versus like, oh, we took a dip. But it was Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. So it's a different bag, but yeah. it was fun. Yeah, it was great. So do you want to do a big Broadway musical? Yeah, that's story. Yeah, I love What are the dream roles? Let's, oh, my let's God. The dream roles is like. Are there any? I mean, I always, I, I got my feet wet in New York. My first crack at thinking that I was going to be out here was doing like a bunch of Spring Awakening auditions. Oh, okay. part of that. You were part of that batch. Yeah, I was part of that. Like, this <laughs> yeah. Spring Awakening camp that uh -huh. was just like, what is it? And then like by the time they ended up casting, they're like, yeah, you're a little too old. And I was like, well, you took forever to cast it. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that was my first taste of, of like New York because after graduation, I was like, I'm just going to move to LA. And my buddy was like, why? You have a musical theater degree. Why would you? And I was like, yeah. okay. And then this kind of knocked on my door, and so many, so many, so many callbacks didn't end up happening, but I ended up getting my agent and ended up staying and working out. And yeah, so I would love to. I mean, there's no way I could play Melchior now. <laughs> Unless the like revival or revival is just like, they're like, production. they're like, yeah, they're like, they should know better, but they're adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so I don't know. That was, that was always one, the one that got away. Um, Here's the one that got away. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. That, no, it's okay. Painful. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then there's this, I don't really know. I mean, I always say the one that hasn't been written yet, you know? Mm. But that's like a corny answer. No, that's okay. Corny answers are okay. Yeah, I would love yeah. to like do roles where it's like, oh, I can't dance, but that would be fun to do Gene Kelly and Singing in the Rain. <laughs> Things oh. that I'm just, oh. I believe me, I'm not putting that out there as anything. I can't do that at all. <laughs> We're talking dream roles, like not in, actual, in your fantasy tangible. mind, that, yeah. that'd be the kind of thing you could yeah, do. Yeah, like classic things like that. But yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, you know, it's crazy West Side Story is having, you know, the new West Side Story, oh, which yes. everyone's wondering what that is. It's yeah. so experimental, and then the movie's coming out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very excited. Yeah, are you? For different reasons, but I'm excited to see what it is. Yeah. yeah. Do you still like singing those songs? I mean, they're beautiful, but it's like, you do you like going to the right gym? Now? You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't like working out, but if I get paid, I'll do it. You know, like, uh -huh. <laughs> it's just, it's great. But at the same time, it was like the best of times and it was the worst of times, you know, like mm -hmm. it just was, it's doing that eight times a week on the road wow. was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Really? Oh, God, yes. Touring life was. No, oh, yes. Yeah, with because that show. the extra pressure of. Well, being on the road and yeah you're just to... traveling on your day off and you're doing a sound check of it you know a tuesday the next day and then you're doing it at that night and right mm -hmm. it just was i was young i was like yeah and then like yeah. i was like oh oh <laughs> right. this is might be the last thing i do you <laughs> right. know but uh you know but I, I you know that was it's just it is a muscle yeah mm. you know yeah. and i was ready uh -huh. to you know not have to do that after the year contract was up so speaking of muscles um, what was it like rehearsing the Fire Island scenes? Oh man, and the inheritance. Man, I remember reading that script and being like, "God help whoever has to play this drug dealer who's front center with this raccoon tail and a speedo." That's you, and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and that is me. The raccoon tail. I've peaked. I've peaked. I've had yeah. you know costumes by William Ivy Long on me, and I've had. <laughs> And now that. And now a Speedo with a raccoon tail, you know? <laughs> it's not a ball gown, but... What I'll, does your wife balance. think of that get out? Uh, she's, you look great. Yeah, I mean, you do. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, I appreciate that. Love you it. Off. You know, it's like, you, you, you at least it's, it's, you know, you go to the gym and hopes for something, and all of a sudden you get that, and you're like, well, <laughs> I guess it's for something now at this yeah. point, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, thank uh, you for going to the gym because if someone who hadn't gone to the gym was doing it, it might might have gotten in the way a little bit. <laughs> oh the story time. It's still a kind of a comedy. Oh it's way. fine. It'd be fine. <laughs> hey, Caitlin. Yes. What are people online saying? Yeah. So Elise wants to know how do you keep like stay healthy and keep up the stamina for such a long and demanding play? And, like, how do you kind of like keep yourself? You're What's doing two full shows. Funny is that there's in the show we kind of have this like family tree of who kisses who on stage. <laughs> And because there's so many people that like kiss one another, uh -huh. that it is like, oh, that person's sick. If Dylan's sick, that means Dylan kisses Carson. Dylan also kisses John Hickey. John Hickey kisses Paul. He also kisses Spoilers. Kyle. Dylan Spoilers. kisses me. There's just so many people that have different characters oh that are God. kissing each uh -huh. other that you're like, 
You're making it sound like Spring Awakening. I see. It all comes <laughs> it full all circle. It all comes back. <laughs> I'm ready. So you have to be careful. Yeah, it's just a lot um, of emergencies. So you have a grid, and yeah. you're like, are any of these people sick that yeah, I have to kiss, and are they kissing <laughs> yeah. someone else that's sick? Oh yeah, my it's God. one I thing see. like learning that I'm recently learning is that it's like you still have to treat it like a musical, even though it's just a play, because mm. it's something that I'm like, oh, your voice is still being yeah. used and needed, and you know, and Jasper gets very heated and yells a lot, so. Yeah. It got to me. And I was but, like, I've got this cool, like, smoky, losing my voice Emma Stone thing happening, but <laughs> I don't know if it's healthy. <laughs> but but the other thing is, as an audience member, the, it, first of all, it's not seven hours straight. It's two different plays. Mm -hmm. But it kind of flies by it does. as an audience member. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's not... It's like watch next episode, each act. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Like next episode, next episode. You know? I've seen 90-minute plays that felt longer. I've heard that, yeah. yeah. So, And that's that. Amazing. So Robin wants to know, how does it feel like to be able to be doing this show during the Red Bucket Folly season for BCFA? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, this, it's awesome. I mean, we've already raised so much money, mm -hmm. and I was like, is, this, is there a competition? Because I think we would win. I mean, I mean, not just, I mean, of course, I have to make everything a competition. But, like, it, like yeah. I'm just very impressed. And it is, you know, at the curtain speech, it's just like, you just saw what yeah. this is organization mm -hmm. is for. And so I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's just a lot of people that are, opening their wallets and giving generously to the cause, which is great. And it's 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 just kind of nice to be the play at the forefront of that in this time season right now for the volleys yeah, and all totally. that. Love it. All right, we'll do one last question. And Eddie wants to know, what has been the most surprising thing that you have learned so far during this process of doing the inheritance? The most surprising thing? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that... Um, Mm, the most surprising thing I think is that you it th that for as long as the play is and the people are being like, you must be exhausted is that it doesn't it actually it doesn't actually feel that way like mm. it, it just is what we've been doing for so long now it's muscle memory so I feel like any show I do after this will be a bit of a cakewalk because it's like it's a you know two hour thing one intermission maybe but it's yeah. like you know it's like we're not I mean it's exhausting but at the same time because it's rewarding it, it yeah. doesn't feel that way it bounces yeah. out so mm -hmm. I think that's we all are kind of in shock at how we're able to kind of do this and you know tell the story that we you know get to tell every night because we're very lucky who are your um, dressing room mates? Carson oh Car Carson okay. McCall, yeah okay. yeah we've got a very cool dressing room okay oh we're yeah very proud of it yeah did you like do it we out? decked it out yeah oh what's it what's it like what's it's, the because, it's like the Zen Den oh. yeah we've got like a bunch of rugs he's got AstroTurf I don't know where he got that <laughs> sure. but that boy's yeah um, and he's 23, so it's nice to kind of just have like a little brother to sort mm. of like, you know, spit some, you know, shade. I'm just like, man, I'm so jaded talking to you. But at the same time, <laughs> he's sort of like the light of, of, you know, of the show for me because he's so, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it's Robert Day Beauty, he's 23. It's, yeah. it's amazing. I was like, yeah. I, I feel really old next to you, but I remember, <laughs> I remember that kid. He's somewhere deep down in, yeah. in, in this darkness yeah. right now. Yes. That's awesome. I love the whole company of the inheritance. I love this the play. Great Everybody go see it, parts one and two. You don't have to do it the same day. You can do it Thursday, Friday, but I recommend it. Yeah, I recommend yeah. doing it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Kyle. Of course, Anne, thank you. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. And be sure to tune in tomorrow.